2350A. So dear, and longing for excitements to Michigan to steer. In the space of three months after, a telegram would come saying your boy has been killed in the lumbering woods and his body will send home. It's once I knew a charming lad, his name was Harry Dunn. His father was a farmer in the township of the Dunn. He had everything he wanted a farm of good land, but he only wished to have the time in the woods of Michigan. He hired with a lumbering king for the woods at Pika Nine. He worked away three long months or so, and oft times did write home, sing soon, sing soon, sing soon. Sing soon, sing soon, winter will be o'er, and then I will come home. He rose one morning from his bunk, no smile to break his brow. He called his chum outside the door, whose name was Charlie Lloyd. Saying, Charlie, dear, I had a dream which fills my heart with woe. I fear there's something wrong at home. It's where I ought to go. His comrade only laughed at him, which cheered him for a while. Saying, hi, dear, it's time we'd go, it's time we'd fall the pine. They worked to wait till ten o'clock all on that fatal day, when a hanging limb fell down on him, which crushed him to the clay. His comrades gathered round him to take the limb away, and Charlie, dear, my time has come, my time has come right away. But you'll go down with me, Charlie, you'll take my body down, and ask my dear old mother what made me leave my home. The second morning after his body was brought down, con the coffin was brought down, containing all that was left on earth of this poor fairy done. His mother, when she saw him, she fell down like a stone. The poor old aged father, he lingered for a while, but never, never afterwards, he never was known to smile. In the space of three months after, they buried the poor old man. So now you see the deadly curse on the woods of Michigan. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got oh, that. Where did you learn that, Bert? I got that. Well, that was in 1902 up here at Dollar. It was a fellow by the name of Billy Co Coffey, working for the Danners. <laughs> you were running camp for the Danners at the time. Mm -hmm. Billy Coffey sang that song, see, and that was in 1902. And, and I've got down the, the first words of it, see, and uh, the first words of each line. And I kept lingering and, 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 and getting it as, as he went along. See. And you learned it all the first time he sang Yeah, it? yeah, the first, it was the first time that he sang it that I went... I never, uh, I never heard it afterwards. Only I keep going over it myself, you know, and and getting the lead from those two letters that I. I never, I never heard it very many times after we was up uh, with the Danners on there. I was in 1902. Bill here was running camp for the Danners at the time. Where were you? Where did you come from originally? Bro? Oh, I came from Canada. Where? Uh, well, I came from. Uh, well, it's in Ontario, but I came from Orillia. Uh, a place called, well, I was born in Peterborough, Canada, but I uh, I later went to Aurelia and worked in Mills and Gravenhurst and Bracebridge. And then I I kept lingering up the line until I hit this. Uh, I hit, well, I hit uh, with an American company over there, see? And they brought me here. They took me to a place called Simmons, see? At the uh, back of Bovee on the Sioux line. Were your people uh, lumbering people too? Yeah, my father. My father was walking boss for the Rathburn Company. That's the oldest company that was in Canada. See? 